So when you arrived, you will have one of these flat panels in your lander and you've no doubt got that set up. However, you'll have noticed that it generates zero power unless the sun is fairly high in the sky and it only reaches 100% at midday. You can get around that by angling it, but it's at a fixed angle, so it's still only 100% efficient for a very small part of the day. Um, and all the angling does is changes whether that part of the day is the morning, the middle of the day or the evening, depending on whether you're pointing it towards where the sun rises or sets or whether you have the flat configuration. So you need to mo move on um, to the solar panel, which can then be fully modified to track the sun. Um, you can make all the bits you need for this tutorial from the auto lathe and the electronics printer, which you should have set up by now. Um, so I've laid out what I'm going to need here. Um, it's worth preparing this because it does need a few pieces. So you need obviously the solar panel kit, and for one solar panel kit, you also need one glass sheet. Now I'm just going to set up a single panel um, and the electronics to drive it. But obviously the electronics, um, once they're set up, will drive all of the panels connected to that circuit. Um, so you, you won't need to uh, double up on, on all of those. Um, you just will, will want to add as many panels as you want, bearing in mind, however, that um, standard cable um, will burn out at 5 kilowatts and one of these running at 100% is going to generate um, 500 watts of power which means if you put more than 10 of them uh, linked up on one you will need to move to heavy cable later on um, which you can make at the electronics printer um, but if you're using standard cable do not link more than 10 of them into one array and if you've got other power generating devices on the same network you'll need to reduce that um, because otherwise you will burn out your cables. So, to begin, I have printed 60 cable coil, two logic processors, four logic IOs, one logic memory, one sensor kit, plus, as I say, one panel and one sheet of glass. So I'm going to begin, I'm just going to put the panel down um, I'm going to put that over here. So the first thing you can see if I rotate it is that um, it has a power on one side and it has a data port on the other side. So set this up so that the data port is facing towards the direction where the sun rises. So in this case it's that direction. That's going to be important later. I'm actually just going to offset it slightly here because I think it will make it easier to see the wiring. So what that means is you have a data port here, you're going to feed data in and the power that it generates will come out of this side. Now these can of course be on different networks and later on that's exactly what I would recommend, one data network that's driving the panels and a separate power network that's distributing the power. So the first thing we're going to do first thing we're going to do is to place the glass onto the panel and you'll see it's facing straight up it's kind of not doing anything obviously it's night time now you can manually with the wrench oops with the wrench you can manually change the angle you can see it rotating there and you can also tilt it up and down so you can do that. Obviously, um, you could stand here and do this all day. It's not much fun and it's going to make it quite difficult to do anything else. So what we want to do is set up some automation to do that for us. I'm going to begin with the sensors. So I'm going to put the sensor kit down here. Now it defaults to the daylight sensor, which is perfect because that's what we want. And you'll see with the daylight sensor that it has an end with a data port and it has a, a sort of diagonally curved off end um, as well. Now put that so that the curved end is again pointing towards where the sun rises. That will be important later. Make sure that is on daylight sensor. Obviously there are three different types of sensors. You don't want to put down a gas or a motion sensor. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put together some electronics. I'm going to start with the memory because it's very simple and I'm going to put that down just here and 
let's move these cables out of the way and then I'm going to add the logic IO so the logic IO chips I'm going to place a reader uh, I'll put that here and then I'm going to place a second reader um, leaving enough space between them to connect them. Now the reason that I'm placing two readers is I want one reader for the horizontal position of the Sun and one for the vertical. We're going to do two axis tracking here right out of the uh, out of the, the box. Um, you could do single axis tracking. It kind of works okay on the Moon because the Sun basically moves across the equator so it just comes up and goes straight overhead and straight back down. Um, but on almost all the other planets, there's some variation, a little bit on Mars, but not huge. You could, you could get away with it. Um, but most of the other planets, um, it becomes increasingly important to have two axes. And the actual amount of chips you need is, is not much more, basically, because you still need one memory. It just means you need um, four um, I.O. instead of two, and you need um, two processors instead of one. So um, for that extra overhead, I think it's worth it. So having placed that, I'm now going to place here, and I'm going to place a batch writer. Make sure you place the batch writer, not the logic writer, because you want to write to all of the solar panels in one go. Okay, so I'm going to place the batch writer and I'm going to place a second batch writer there. Now you'll see the way I've positioned this, I've done it on purpose because the inputs to these chips are around three of the four sides. But you can see we're going to need a fair bit of wire to connect them. Then the last part of the system that we're going to need is two logic processors. And we're going to have those set to logic math. Now these are four-way chips, so um, there isn't necessarily a great place to fit those here. Um, I think I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put one here. And again, it's two because we have one for each axis, one for the horizontal, one for the vertical. So we've placed down a number of things and we need to connect all of these up, um, which is why I took quite so much cable. Um, because what you'll see is we get through quite a lot of it. So um, obviously these chips connect down this side, so we're going to need to connect across here. We're going to want the T-junction there because we've got connections on that bit. T-junction there, one to connect down there, one to connect there. Finally we're going to put one on there. Then I'm going to T-junctions down the side here and here. You'll see all of these are connecting four-way along here and here and here and here um, let's get T junctions in over here and uh, let's think about the best way to this doesn't hugely matter here um, actually we'll put the four way in there and that in there the reason it doesn't hugely matter which way I connect this is do I connect it from the top or the bottom but that will work fine and another T junction and a four-way T-junction and a four-way and in the end we need to get it down here so I, in fact I'll put that to T-junction and we'll run that along here so we're going to need to connect that um, which I may as well do with a T-junction I've left it a little bit raggedy on the end there I might connect those so Okay, I've got away with that. With um, let's tidy it up and connect that there. Pretty much everything connected. I've got 12 cable left, which is great. But of course, I need to actually connect to collect some power from this, and I need to connect all of this up to something else. So I'm just going to connect it to the trailing end of our power network over there, um, which I shall do now. Now, at this stage, if you're right off the lander you won't be able to yet make a power controller but when you are able to I recommend that you do this and the reason for it is you want to make sure that you have a bit of a buffer if your batteries go flat to make sure your solar panels are still tracking the Sun so as soon as you can in the short term obviously you just connect up cable straight into your um, power network um, to drive these chips but as soon as you can um, place 
an area power controller. Connect that there. Let's get the wire cutters and just get that connected onto there. Onto there. Onto there. Okay, there we go. So I haven't actually connected yet the power end. I'm going to need more cable clearly to do that. Nine is not going to be enough. And then we'll put a battery in there. Now, what that means is, once that's turned on, we've got power to these chips. But if the main power were to go out, that gives us a bit of time. And that's important because if you run out of power during the night, for example, and you're not generating any more, you really want these panels to move to track the sun in the morning when the sun comes up. And that's the most likely time that you're going to lose power early game. Now, I'm going to run a separate power cable here. I don't think I'm going to have enough in this stack, although I have got a second stack. I'm going to run this up here. So even my estimate of 60 was not enough. Um, obviously, your mileage will vary. But I'm going to connect it here. So I'm connecting it to this side. In fact, I really want to connect it to the charging side of this APC here, um, which is a bit of a wiring challenge, I'll be honest. Um, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. So um, I'm just going to be a bit cheeky and connect it straight in. Um, but save time digging underneath these to move it around but of course this APC is meant to be the main distributor so all of your solar panels of all sorts and your solid generator really ought to be feeding this side and then from here the battery will feed out to all the rest of things so I've, I've slightly broken that model by connecting it um, into here um, but I otherwise need to get the cable I guess I'd need to run it all the way around the outside. Um, so for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to slightly break that. It's kind of just worth knowing, but um, it's not going to affect the outcome here. Right, so the first thing we need to do is to start actually doing something with all this logic I've placed down. Now, we need to set the value in this memory. Um, two ways you can set a value um, in a memory. You can either use a screwdriver and turn the screws, in which case the big ones are in increments of 100, the smaller in increments of 1. If you hold down C, it divides that by 10. So you can go in tens by holding down C and clicking the big one. And you can go in 0 0.1 if you do that. So that's one way. Uh, the other way, which can be quicker, particularly for large values, is you can grab the labeler. And obviously, if you point at them, this, and we are going to rename a number of these, you click on it and rename it. And I'm going to call this logic memory 90 for reasons that will be obvious in a minute. But if I point, instead of pointing at the main chip, point any of the screws, it doesn't matter which one, I can actually set the value as well and I'm just going to set it to 90 which is why I called it memory 90. Now this becomes quite important um, to, to start labelling because you need to make sure you don't mix up the vertical and the horizontal. So I'm going to call that logic reader solar V for vertical. I mean obviously you can type more if you like. Batch writer solar V. I'm going to then do the same here, solar H for horizontal and solar H for horizontal. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two math units and I'm going to set them to solar V and solar H. You can obviously label, label these however you like, whatever makes sense on your network. I personally prefer to try to keep the name of the type of device as the start so that all of the similar devices are clustered together and then add some sort of meaningful label to the end. Um, but you can do whatever works for you. Um, I'm also going to call this Daylight Sensor Solar, just so that we know that's one connected to the solars. So let's turn that off because it makes an annoying noise. Um, and get to work with setting up this logic. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to set the readers, right? So this is the vertical reader. So I'm going to point it at daylight sensor. Whoops, went too far. Hold down C to go back the other way if you do that. Point that at daylight sensor solar. And I'm going to point that. It's V, so I'm going to point it at the variable vertical. 
I'm going to turn that on and if I hover over it you'll see that's got a value and it's changing each tick and then I'm going to repeat the same over here so I'm going to daylight sensor solar and this one's H so I'm going to set this one to horizontal and this one you'll see has got a value which is not changing it's minus 180 right so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set these math units up so I'm going to take the input solar here and I am going to connect it to the reader I'm going to add 90 so that's now minus 90 and I'm going to do the same here with the vertical so I'm going to take the reader the vertical I'm going to leave that as add and I'm going to add 90 and that's coming up with a higher value now what I'm going to do is push those values back into the solar panel but not just this solar panel all of the solar panels connected because these are batch writers and that's where it's important to make sure we've got the right thing so the first thing we're going to do we're going to take the input so this is the vertical so i'm going to take the input from logic math solar v and the output type is going to be and you'll see this is just types of devices so i'm going to have this pointing at solar panel dual and i'm going to point that at its vertical and i'm going to turn that on and you'll see this is now moving by itself and I'm going to repeat the same over here logic math so that H whoops so the panel dual and I'm going to set that to horizontal and turn that on and now it's going to rotate round and if we watch it you should see it will rotate around to face the direction of the sun and look at the efficiency climbing and there we go 99 percent and that will now track the sun across the sky and you can see it moving vertically very slowly to follow the sun and the, re and the reason that it's important to make sure that you get everything pointing in the direction that i described is because you need to make sure that you're correctly applying that plus or minus 90. So at this point the solar panel is now generating 459 watts as the sun goes down gradually dropping obviously when night comes that will stop but by the morning it will be facing this way ready for the sunrise and it's as simple as that. So you can add more solar panels to this system and they'll all track the sun together and you can continue adding until you reach the uh, maximum capacity of the cable.